Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iPad Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Coming up, school's in for the autumn. Yeah. we got a lot of back-to-school apps to talk about sing, today. Sing that, Alice. I will. Plus, donate that old Mac to a needy school, options for jailbreakers, and a plethora of duh tips. All that and the best photo app we've seen in a while on iPad Today. Woo! iPad Today is brought to you by Go to My PC. Your ability to stay mobile can be key to your success. With Go to My PC, you can work from anywhere, anytime, right from your iPad. Download the free app and visit gotomypc.com for your free 30 day trial. Promo code iPad. And by Netflix.com. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All stream directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, visit Netflix.com slash twit. That was pretty good. It was good. It was I good. matched the hooch. <laughs> I matched the hooch guy. He has a huge fa- hand. hand. So, Leo, uh, we uh, were thinking about what, what could we possibly talk about that would be timely and informative on this episode of iPad Today. And before before we could sit around and worry about it too much, we actually got a voicemail uh, from a, a kind viewer who, who decided to choose this week's theme for us. We actually prefer that. Yeah. You tell us what to do. Hey, Leo, hey, Sarah. I was wondering if you guys could do a show theme on uh, back-to-school <laughs> apps. Um, now is the time when a lot of kids are getting uh, more tech and... The iPad especially is a great tool for school. And uh, I was wondering if you guys could review any a bunch of apps for uh, going back to school, help kids get organized, um, and just have fun with school. Because school is a big part of our lives. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye. I'm, no, can't I'm, have fun at school. I'm glad it's a big part of his life. Part, uh, do kids really bring iPads to school? Uh, yes, many schools use iPads, really? in fact. Wow, oh, yeah, interesting. You, you know that. Well, By the way, I, he, you know, he called back to tell us his name was Anthony. Hi, so he Anthony. actually called twice. Hi, Anthony. Thanks he, for the... This, it's, this is actually a really, really good idea because... Uh, this week was back to school for a lot of kids. Well, almost everything that we talk about, every game we talk about is a school app. I mean, if you want to have fun in school. But we have some actually educational apps. There maybe, we do. Maybe some fun in the educational side of it. Well, the whole idea, I think, is that your app isn't going to replace a teacher or anything. No, no, no. no. But there are, there are supplemental games and activities, flashcards, note-taking. I mean, there's so I, many things that the iPad can almost, be as a great tool for school. I almost think of it as something you have at home that helps you in school. In fact, that's one of the apps I have is going to help you with that. But but why don't we start with uh, an app something, that something you called like a lot. Elements. And it's I'm actually somewhat new to Elements. Uh, it is actually a, a new app. Um, MG actually told me about it. I'm not sure where it is. Is so it really a new app? To. Because I, I, I've been using it for a while. They may have updated it. Perhaps um, that's what it is. Perhaps yeah. I looked at the yeah. fact that it was updated on August yeah. 11th. So I thought that it was yeah. new. It was new to me. So this is a, it's a Dropbox and Markdown Powered Text Editor is actually the full description. So what's great about this is if you're a Dropbox user already, it is absolutely seamless. In fact, you have to sign in to Elements with your Dropbox account. So in order to even start using Elements, you've already got the two synced. Once you're in, uh, the, uh, in, t- in the app, if you want to take a look at my screen, this is a very simple interface. It's very easy to edit. There you go. Uh, very simple. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's a pretty simple text editor. Obviously, I've given it a title. You know, I've I've written down some stuff. You can change the 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 text, the font, the size, the color. It's pretty simple. I mean, you don't have a lot of options there. You can arrange uh, folders. What's sort of strange about this is that you have to, let's say I was going to, you know, I'm going to create a new, th- I'm creating a new folder here. So I have multiple folders and maybe multiple um, uh, uh, documents. I have to arrange the documents inside of folders within Dropbox rather than within elements. 
Some people have complained about that, that they don't like that. I tend to think that that's probably where you would do most of your organizing anyway because right. the iPad use would be more on the fly. Right. So it's kind of you go back to your computer later in your dorm room or whatever and you organize the notes that you've been taking. But let's say, okay, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to uh, start a new, create a new uh, document. And I'm writing along. This obviously isn't going to make any sense, but let's just say, it was, you know, this notes that I'm taking. So I'm writing along with the teacher, and let's say maybe there's something, or you know, I'm 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 creating something for my English class, and maybe I've I've got something that yeah, <laughs> that English is yeah, well, it's, 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 it's like it's, Klingon actually. It's a different kind of English. It's the, what the kids are. That's, <laughs> that's how, how the, the kids, kids talk. talk. Yeah, it's yeah. so that the parents don't know what they're saying. But let's say I've got an idea, and it's not really fitting into my document. Uh, Elements gives you this nice little scratch pad, so you can just write down maybe just bullet points or, oh, there's this one point I need to make and that's going to be a few paragraphs away and I'm just not ready for that there, but I don't want to forget. Because if you're like me, then if you don't write something down, it's, it's sort of gone forever. What's great about Elements, and we have talked about text editors in the past, so you might think, well, I don't know, this looks pretty bare bones and I'm not really sure how it's different than something like Write Room, which I've talked about in the past that I really like. What's great about this is that you have great export options. So let's say you have a Tumblr account and you want to be uh, regularly um, publishing posts to Tumblr. It has a really nice little Tumblr oh, and Facebook integration handy. right off the bat. Yeah, Facebook actually only posts your profile and I've really... I'm really starting to wonder why apps don't use Facebook pages more often because I know that th they have a capability to let you choose between a page and a profile. Well, not only a few of us, like you and me, I know. and Twit, well, use pages, I, I mean, right? It, yeah. As far as the educational system, I can't imagine. Well, what if a teacher had a page well, or that would make sense had a page too. set up? That would actually make sense. Yeah, that's a little bit more on the educator's right. side. But I, it's just a little gripe that I have. When you have Facebook integration, profiles and, pa and pages would both be nice. But Tumblr's a really cool feature, and that's something that I, it seems to be new, um, at least to these text editors, that they would say, hey, you might be writing and wanting like to that. post to Tumblr. That is new, because, you know, it's had Dropbox integration before. I, I, I actually collect Dropbox uh, notepad applications, because the problem with any application that you're writing on on the, on the iPad is how do you get the stuff out of there easily? Exactly. And having Dropbox integration just makes it simple. You just write it. You don't worry about it. If you, and and a, a lot of uh, students I know want to have a desktop at home that their documents are on, but then they bring it to school and it's automatically on the iPad. This is a great solution. But I love the idea of tum make it, it's a blogging device. Isn't that great? Yeah, you yeah. can export to, as an HTML file or a PDF file, which is which is good as well. Just gives you some options, and it is four ninety nine. So. $5, you really need to love Dropbox, I think. That is the selling point. If you're a Dropbox user, this is just, this is your computer. All of the stuff that you create then will be on your computer later. I mean, that's kind of how you think of it. Again, the two need each other. They are completely integrated, but you do have export options into other services as well. I like it. I think it works really well for what it does. Um, and I've pretty much explained what it does already. So it's great for kids who are taking notes in class and then need to be a little bit more organized when they get back to their computer. One of the things everybody says we really want, as long as we're going to have an iPad, is the ability to put our textbooks on an iPad. Students today have 100-pound backpacks that they yeah. lug to school, and they're all going to have humps it's true. as they get to our age. This is the beginning of that. This is from a company called KNO. I'm presuming they pronounce that no. Probably like knowledge. And it is a textbook app, over 100,000 textbooks, as much as half off list price. And they use the, they integrate into the books things like quizzes and so forth. Let me see. I'm having, I was having trouble. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Um, uh, installing it on my, uh, on my iPad. So now, it's it's primarily for uh, for education, uh, secondary and uh, college education. It's not going to be. Um, you sign in. There's they say seventy thousand textbooks. Keep things organized. Just like it's like kind of like the iBook store uh, bookshelf. Mm -hmm. um, but they've got quizzes. They've got all sorts of interesting features that make this even better than just a plain old textbook. And you, and you kind of have to like that. Um, the ability to notate to annotate. Um, I, I think this is really the future of textbooks. We've, we've always wanted this, you know, as, uh, as um, uh, uh, kids have talked about bringing an iPad to school. And, and what a great way to, to do a, a textbook. So it's a free app, but of course they know that you're going to use it to buy their textbooks. Do check with your school to make sure that the books that you need will be available in the No database. Um, I, I just think this is, 
we're going to see a lot of this. You know, a number of countries, South Korea now says that they're going to put all their secondary school textbooks on an iPad, and most students will get an iPad. This is going to happen more and more. It's what we've been waiting for. A lot of people said, oh, this is great. Now textbooks instead of, you know, I just paid $100 for my son's chemistry, high school chemistry textbook. Oh, now they won't cost 100 bucks. No, unfortunately, we're not seeing that kind of savings on these digital textbooks, mostly because I think the cost is not just printing. I mean, you might get some savings, yeah. you know, but the, the cost really is developing the curriculum and then getting it through all the school boards. You have to get it through the Texas school board, the California school board. That's a lot of work. So textbook publishing is not like regular book publishing. They're expensive because the process that states require them to go through uh, school boards require them to go through our are it's really, more just yeah. convenience for the user. You don't have to lug around exactly. a bunch it's of heavy convenience. chemistry books. And I like what Noah has done to make these, uh, to take advantage of the digital uh, capabilities, things like flashcards, quizzes, and stuff that the book publishers can build into the books that are in, make it an interactive uh, solution. That's K N O. Let's hope this is the future of uh, of textbooks. And you know, it does. It really look. It has all of the. Uh, the verve of a, uh, a real textbook, right? But you could do some additional things like th there's a journal here so I can bookmark that page and then take some notes, that kind of there's thing. There's also, I love that, I, you always remember when you were in school and you would buy used books whenever you could because they were so much cheaper. As long as you can read what's on the page, that's the way I always went. But every once in a while, I get stuck with a book that had these really annoying notes from whoever had it before me. And it was just like <laughs> very distracting. Like, why did she circle this word right. it's just uh, what was she doing who is this person so it, it sort of takes a little bit of that distraction out of it too one of the most essential anybody who's taking any sort of math class essential apps on the ipad which really should be native but it isn't it's called calculator now calculator <laughs> for ipad uh this Ooh, is, that's a nice one yeah it's a good one uh that's pretty i should say off the bat that there are, if you search for calculator for ipad in the app store several apps will come up right. there's like a calculator for ipad with a period after i have a folder full of calculators well on you're kind of a calculator nerd. i'm a calculator we, we have nerd. talked about calculators in the past on this show yeah. this particular app is kind of if you had to just have one this would be the one that you would want so it's calculator for ipad that's exactly what it is, and and you and you'll be able to see it's like a little. The icon is is a, is a there you go. It's got the plus. It's got the HD. So, what I want to say right off the bat is it is free to download. However, the ads to upgrade for ninety nine cents to get the non ad version annoying. are annoying yeah. are annoying to the point where I was like I need to pay ninety nine yeah. cents and get rid of them. So I'm going to say this app is a dollar because the free version is annoying. Once that happens, you get this beautiful calculator. As you can see, it's pretty much got everything that you would need in a, you know, to up, to, up to a certain level of math. I mean, this, would, this is really gonna cover you. I was having a little bit of fun with some of the numbers that make no sense to me. And uh, the idea is, is that you, you know, you can use it as pretty much any sort of a calculator, but when you upgrade, it's like if you ask, well, what are you upgrading to? You get some different views. So, you know, you can kind of change the colors. That is like the ugliest calculator I've ever seen, but hey, some people might like that Post little, note that, <laughs> yeah, that little funny. title card type of, it's, you know, it's a, maybe if you're feeling bored in, in your algebra class, this might help you out a little <laughs> bit type of thing. Uh, you can choose to have the, okay, so here we go, um, a girly calculator. I'm sure that that's what they were thinking. Anyway, wow. I personally would not want a pink calculator, but hey, some people no would. No judgment. That's aggressively pink. Yeah, I know. There's all sorts of good that's stuff. That's pretty. This I is like yeah. That. This kind of looks like a wooden thing. Yeah. You can have the keys make uh, make sound or not. I tend to feel the same way with a calculator as I do with my iPad, where. Uh, I don't need to hear the clicking because I'm already looking at it and I know what I'm hitting. Right. But that's just completely a personal preference. Um, you can even change from radians to degrees. Uh, math nerds will know that that's, that's a cool thing to have. Anyway, calculator for iPad, you've got to have it if you're taking math classes. And I mean, this works for basic arithmetic too. It just gives you a really cool calculator. Again, it's 99 cents because I don't think the free version is worth the annoying ads that will scroll and never stop at the bottom of your page got to have that for school. I think a lot of people who use calculators, I'm going to throw this in as an as a added benefit. A rogue app? A rogue app will like a graphing calculator. If you're in math class, uh, this is a great way to understand algebra uh, and calculus too. There are, are a number of great graphing calculators available uh, on the iPad. This is actually called Graphing Calculator HD. Highly recommend it. And it's fun to play with because when you enter in equations and you see the graph, it actually really helps you understand what's going on uh, in the equation. So this is a nice app. This is the one that I uh, 
sent you, though, that I thought would be very useful for any student. You know, one of the things I think an iPad is great for is keeping track of classes, assignments, your calendar. This is called in class. You see, it's ad supported. There's an in app purchase for 99 cents. You can get rid of the ads. Yes, just like yours, you're going to want to do that because, frankly, it's kind of annoying to have these ads for. It's actually distracting to have these ads down here. A student might be working and say, oh, I'd like to see Man in Space. Well, exactly. And all of a sudden, they're, they're kind it's, of out yeah, of what I feel like doing. the education, app makers should well, know better. Well, they're trying to They're giving you a freebie so you can see yeah. if it works for you. And I can understand. So maybe for the first week of school, you try this. This is great because it has a calendar. Uh, of course, that's important. But it also has a to-do list, very important, in which you can add a course a date and a priority for that particular homework. You can check it off. So when you when you go here, you you know I haven't added any courses yet. But when you go in here, uh, you'll know what you need to do each and every day. And I think that's really really important. It also has notes. So this is a unified note taking application in addition to your to do list and your calendar. And of course in here you can put your teacher. I have uh, Mr. Spaghetti. I'm taking his class on sauces. And uh, and you can have <laughs> you can have information about Mr. Spaghetti including his office hours and things like that. Um, I think they've done a really nice job. It's a it's it's a it's a basic day planner with real really aimed at. Please select one day of the week. Already right, meets you on Tuesday. To. You have to. You have to go to Mr. Spaghetti's class on Tuesday. Have to go to Mr. Spaghetti's class on Tuesday. You have some settings in here. The backup. I wish they supported Dropbox. Yeah. Um, or they had a desktop app. Uh, they don't. You can email everything but photos, videos, and audio. So you can email text and stuff. So you can get your data out of it. But I wish they had a better way of doing that. Um, I think this is, a, this is a, a, a very nice job and not very expensive. 99 cents. Um, you even can have different terms in here uh, for, you know, the first term. And I can add a course. I should add a course. Let's have a, let's have a, a course. What should I call this course? Sauces. 101. Mr. Spaghetti always teaches this every year, and I really look forward uh, to that. I'll give it a nice. So you're going uh, to cooking school. Tomato. Then. No, no. Is it's this just your Plan ad. B? Culinary? Yeah. The culinary academy. Plan B, just in case. <laughs> is it a lecture, a class, a lab, or a seminar? I can add a schedule. I can add Mr. Spaghetti as the instructor, of course, and we'll just add this. We'll say I meet. This class meets every day of the week for three minutes, right there at 157. That's and, awesome. Yeah, I think this is. And then because this is now. In uh, in my calendar, I, I'm not only going to not miss the class, um, but I'm also uh, going to be able to add uh, lecture notes right to that class and add to do's, you know, assignments. Wow, that this class. is for a hyper organized student. You know, I wish I'd had something like this. And students nowadays, when you, when you get into middle school, they actually give you a paper day planner, mm -hmm. really trying to teach you how to do that stuff. This is something that you can use on your iPad, carry with you. My only negative on this, I wish, and please just put Dropbox integration in there. Every yeah. app should have Dropbox in yeah. it. Yeah. And then that way, or, or a desktop app that it could sync with. But what you want is you want to be able to just get it out of the iPad in case you lose it. Finally, I just want to quickly mention something that's near and dear to all of you our hearts, and that got is good grammar. I got good you grammar. You got good Leo. grammar. Say you, it right. You are amazing. <laughs> I like. I I think grammar is fascinating, I and we know so. that it's not just kids who are trying to figure out no. how spelling and grammar. We 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 read a blog post from esteemed <laughs> peers every day, you and I'm like, that's attention. not really what begging the question means. You know, yeah, that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, you, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, anyway, this is a, a, a somewhat basic grammar app. It's called Grammar App HD. So you can remember that. And it, it, it is exactly what you think it'll be. So let's go into punctuation rules here. Uh, okay, ellipses. What are some of the rules of ellipses? So it tells you a little bit about it, and then you can, you can go into um, lessons. So you, you, you read, okay, so this is how the, the ellipsis rules work, and then you choose the correct sentence type of thing. You can do the same thing for, you know, sometimes people are like, why, why do some people use hyphens and not? And I think that it's important to remember that, and, and I'm totally guilty of this too when I'm using a blog, uh, for example, as kind of a creative writing outlet, is that some of these rules that we all learned in school, you take liberties with right. in your life because you're well, trying to you're use colloquial. your authentic voice. Yes, exactly. But there That's is, appropriate. Yeah, but there is, when you're learning your grammar rules, uh, there, there is, there are rights and wrongs. There, there are actually rules. Yes. And I think it's important to know those rules so that you know what liberties you can take later. You've got writing rules. You've got basic grammar. Um, <laughs> when are italics appropriate? For what, uh, for example, that sort of thing. I like this grammar app. Um, it's, it's pretty rudimentary, but I think that it is 
definitely great for anybody who's in the age group where they're trying to master the stuff. And it's also just a good reminder for some people who might need it. I am not calling out anybody. Um, and then you can test your progress as well as you, as you continue to do the lessons. It'll give you a sense of how you're doing, what you're stuck on. You obviously don't know how parentheses work correctly, <laughs> and so on. You do not know how parentheses work. So those are just a few of the... I got a good book for you, for you bloggers. Yeah? Yeah. You know the elements of style, the Did classic... you say you bloggers? Use, I never blog. Use blo well, yeah, that's right. You ought to start blogging a little yeah. bit more. The elements of style, the classic book, Struck and White, the, you know, kind of the fundamentals of grammar and style, and a wonderful book. But it's not been updated in some years. It was written at the turn of the century. This is it, The Elements of Effing Style. It is a useful book. <laughs> <laughs> I actually bought this so I could learn. Oh, the Elements of Ficking Style. That's what I was thinking. Oh. Fracking Style. A uh, very helpful book for those who wish to blog better. I love that. Mm -hmm. It's good stuff. Uh, so thank you. Uh, what was his name again? Anthony. Anthony. Great suggestion. I mean, really it is back to school time. Yeah, well, uh, why didn't we think of that? Back to school. It couldn't be more timely. So again, these are just a few of the many educational apps. Uh, we've talked about them a little bit in the past. I think right around this time last year. But it's a it's a really really good category to revisit on a regular basis. Obviously, because so many schools and students of all ages are using iPads more and more just to uh, to keep track of what they're learning. What is that? It's the elements of fudging style. I knew I knew I got that wrong. This is Jersey's finest cream fudge. Hello. 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 Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> hello, little I'm gonna friend. I'm going to give you this while you have a little fudge. Oh, dear. Uh, while I talk about going to my PC. Oh, I've decided I... that from now on, when I do the ads... I will eat chocolate. You get a chocolate break. Congratulations. <laughs> the best, best life. <laughs> this, would, Thank you like you a, life. would you like a candy, ladies and gentlemen, at home here? <laughs> Please have a little fudge. This Thanks fudge to looks... our visitor from uh, the <gasps> aisle, to Channel Thank Isles. Thank you. Brought that by. Mm. And he also bought black butter. I don't know about that. Uh, this uh, show brought to you by our friends at Citrix, who do the great go to... How is that? Is that good? Oh, my God. Yeah. Go oh to my... my God. <laughs> go to my PC. You can access your computer from anywhere on your iPad. Windows or Mac is something a little weird when you're on your iPad. You're going down, you know, you're at the pool or you're, you know, at the hotel or the airport or just relaxing in your Barca lounger and you fire up your iPad and there's a Windows interface on there. You can do everything you could do at work. You can mouse around. You can send and receive email, run any program. Yes, Windows programs. Access any network resource just like you were at your office PC, for instance. Windows or Mac. And the iPad app is free, so that's really cool. Here's what, in fact, the whole thing is free for the next 30 days. If you visit go to mypc.com and uh, click the Try It Free button. There you go. That little orange button there. And then enter in, in the promo code just three uh, four letters IPAD. I-P-A-D. When you try it for free for 30 days, I think you'll see how convenient it is to be able to leave work early, uh, to hit the road, to just, you know, get a little work, work done at home. It's nice to clear out the inbox before you show up, after, especially during vacations. Uh, and doing it on your iPad is spectacular. Go to mypc.com, click the Try It Free button, use the uh, offer code iPad. And we thank Citrix, the folks who make it, for their support support of uh, iPad today. By the way, 128-bit SSL, so you can, you know, use the Wi-Fi on your iPad and open access spot and be completely secure. In fact, if you wanted to do secure surfing on your iPad, that's one way to do it, is to have a go to my PC set up at your office, connect to it, and then surf through your office computer. Clever, right? I think our timing is spot on because just as you finish that, I finished the last of the fudge that was wedged in one of my molars. <laughs> oh, man, that was good. They call this one-minute fudge. Is it, it really good? <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. It's so good. Mm. Wow. Uh, just a quick reminder that if you're not... <laughs> now I just it's got made a lot a of energy. I've just made a friend. I Go no ahead. longer am angry with you, Leo. No, I know. I can tell. Everything's great. I had to make up. Just a quick reminder that uh, for our live viewers, you know when we record this, but if you're not watching live, we'd always like you to join us live when you can. Mm -hmm. We record the show at 1.30 p.m. Pacific on Thursdays. That's 4.30 Eastern. If you have app ideas of your own, like Anthony, you can always call us at 757-504-IP. PAD or write us at iPad today at twit.tv. It's interesting when we were talking about some of our back to school apps earlier, someone in the chat room had mentioned a company called Inkling, which is awesome because I was actually going to mention Inkling I myself. I had an Inkling you would say that. Did you? Yes, I did. Well, that's we're all on the same page apparently because Inkling is a Bay Area company 
that's just raised seventeen million dollars wow. to bring textbooks to the iPads. What wow. kind of ties into what you were talking about earlier? They actually have deals with McGraw Hill and Pearson, and the whole idea is rebuilding college textbooks so that it's not just okay. Let's put it in form where it looks like an ebook. It's more of an interactive type of experience. It's which just is, what Noah's is doing, yeah. Yeah, which is obviously why you go $17 million, my goodness, what the heck. There's a lot of work that goes into making an iPad a multimedia experience um, versus just text on paper with some photos. It's interesting because Inkling and No are the two big competitors right. in this space. No just raised $46 million Whoa. in its round of funding. So it's a, it's actually... This is a big market. Of, it, well, and that's exciting because I you know I don't care which one wins, but the fact that there is competition and it's, and it's happening and it's stirring, I think is good for students. Well, let's not forget Push Pop Press that Facebook bought. They were the ones who made the Al Gore app, and the name is escaping me. Our oh, yeah. our choice. Yeah, that was and a that great was app. an amazing app, that and they were really the people nice. who. So it's kind of hard to know what Facebook's going to do with that whole ebook company in the long run, because I think it was more of a talent acquisition than anything else. Right. But hopefully, they won't just let it die because it was a really cool idea. It just it just goes to show that. A lot of people are working in the space. There's obviously a demand for it. And sooner than later, this is really how most of our textbooks are going to live. I hope so. I do too. You know, there's a, there's a little debate over the inkling approach versus the no approach. K&O, the company we were talking about yeah. earlier, decided that they wanted to duplicate page numbers and everything so that a professor could say to people who had the physical book or the iPad mm -hmm. book, page 600 to be the same page. Right. Uh, so they added their interactivity kind of as a separate layer from the textbook itself. So it really, re as you saw, reproduces the textbook. Inkling is going to, as you said, do something that's a lot more interactive. Yes. And we'll see which one wins. They're two different approaches. Reimagining. Yeah. I think also for... I mean, I say professors because, I don't know, I guess college was the last time I was in school, so this is as far back as I go. Hey, but professor. any teacher, especially if you've been doing it for a while, yes, textbooks get updated, but it's like some teachers, this is a learning curve for them as well. Right. It's like all the students have iPads, I just right. have this book, are we all going to be speaking the same language? So it is important to be able to say, page 600, let's all get on that page, however you end up doing it. There is an organization, a nonprofit organization, called Teach for America, Leo. I know about them well. I love Do them. you? Yeah, I think they're a great group. So they are actually working with Apple, the company, mm -hmm. to help uh, people donate their iPads, which then Teach for America... So, the so they'll get a lot of iPad 1s probably, right? Pro yeah, yeah, I mean, that would fine. be... Unless, for some reason, you have the good fortune to have... Extra a iPad second twos. iPad 2 and <laughs> yeah. you want to donate your first one. I, I'm not ready to do that. But my first gen iPad would have been a great contender for this. The idea with Teach for America is they help place um, often just out of college graduates, um, people who are, are certainly have the potential to be really good teachers in um, school uh, education systems that are performing uh, under their it's uh, like potential. The Peace Corps or AmeriCorps for exactly. teachers. And I think it's such a good idea. Really good idea. Yeah. And Teach for America, what you do is th they're actually the people that are going to be dispersing these iPads into places that need it most. But you don't even really need to know much about them because you can actually take them into an Apple retail store and say, this is what I want to do with this. Let Apple I've do heard it. about this yeah. program and Apple will take it from there because they're working directly directly with the Teach for America folks. This is teachforamerica.org if you want to know more about them. They've got a really great website and obviously a really good mission. And it's, just, it's hey, we don't all have iPads laying around, but if for whatever reason you do, I can't think of a much better way to make sure that someone who really needs it gets it than something like this. Good group. Great Very group. good group. Highly recommended. So we've talked very little about jailbroken apps in the past. You know, we, should we do more of that? I'd love to hear from people. Once in a while, you know, one of the weeks that you were gone and Tom filled in for you, he it had a bunch of jailbroken app. apps and yeah. it was very popular. Everyone said, this All is right. great. We could do that. I don't mind jailbreaking But you. then the problem is, is that then the apps are flaky because when Apple updates, right. then people say, well, why isn't this working anymore? And it's just, it becomes this whole, well, it's another ecosystem that Apple doesn't support and it can be janky. I think we, I kind of consciously made a decision to make this more mainstream and yeah. uh, the vast majority, most of the people who watch Twit Live do things like this, but the vast majority of people don't hack their iPads. Right. They don't, they don't uh, jailbreak them. And they, and there's, and I've, we did it. We actually jailbroke an iPad on the air. We did because we wanted to show iOS yeah. 5. Um, 
But no, even before that, we, we, we did the one-click jailbreaking, and I, oh, I did it on the air. Yeah, that's true. Um, but I always end up going back because, exactly, as you say, the updates, you don't get the updates. You, so, you, so you start to get left behind. And I've never found something in the Cydia store or any of these third-party stores that was so compelling that I had to have it. Yeah. There might be some specific uses like Demo God or you want to do tethering. But um, for the most part, I think the apps that you want are, frankly, uh, on unjailbroken. We did get um, – we got a couple of tips – about an app called iUsers. So it's like okay. little i, big users. Have yeah. you heard of this? No, what is that? Well, it's, uh, I want to talk about it because I figured, especially for a household that has more than one student and oh. maybe just one iPad, the multiple profiles thing, which Apple has never given this us. This is something we need. And it's something that we need. And everyone, uh, well, not everybody, but anybody who's sharing an iPad would really like their own profile if they were able to have it, right? iUsers will allow this. Now, it's limited, and from everything that I've read, I didn't install it because I don't need it. Um, people have mixed results with it. And it seems that the techier you are, the more you can look past how it might be a little crashy. This is it in Should news. I send it to one or two here? What? Oh, you got the video. Okay. Yeah. Right. So this is, this is actually setting up a test user from within uh, an iPad that already has. You don't need to play that audio, Chad. <laughs> it's very dramatic. I don't think it was their the own Franceschi brothers put it on there, yes. Exactly. So this is... It, That's a if great you go back to the video, idea. Yeah. So there, you it can is one thing we really needed, the ability to choose to have different users. Exactly. So the, Okay, that's a reason to jailbreak. And what this will do is it will not change the apps that are in the collection, but it will remember the way that you've arranged them. So that's already pretty helpful. So you have the same users. apps. You have the same apps, but... Do you have your same data space or do you have separate data spaces? That's the real key. So when you have different logins on a computer, you still have access to the same apps. Right. But what you want is your own document space so that you can't see the other guy's documents, he can't see yours. The way the apps are set up and, and the preferences are saved are unique to each user. That's the kind of thing you this want. This is not that sophisticated. This yeah. is more like when you give me the iPad and I sign it set as myself, Twitter it. remembers my credentials, so okay. I'm not looking at well, your that, Twitter that's stream. Good. That's a start. And if I have a folder called movie apps, that you never want to see, right. they can be arranged differently. So right. it's, it's <laughs> for a household where people trust each other, <laughs> you know, there's not a lot of, right. um, I'm That's going to ruin your Angry bird score type of a thing going on. Right. This this could be good. But again, it's, it's for people who are comfortable with the whole jailbreaking experience. And as a parent, you may or not may or may not want your kids to even go there. So we I'll should leave it mention up to you. it's not illegal to jailbreak uh, your Mac. It's completely you. It's completely allowed to do. Apple's not thrilled about it, but right. in fact, I don't. You know, you can always restore it uh, back to its original state. So it's not going to void your warranty. Even after Apple said it might, it won't. Um, but, it, but it does perhaps impinge on your security because you've effectively told uh, your kids and anybody else who uses your iPad that they can download apps from places besides Apple. That's what jailbreaking means. And so there's always the risk that there may be something on those stores that has some malware in it, something like that. Exactly. We did get a tweet from uh, Romart628 well. who asked, is there a way to play videos on my iPhone and display them on my iPad too? I want to do this when I'm away from Wi-Fi, but I have data. So the idea that they have it, that, that Romort has is, I've got an iPhone and an iPad, I've got 3G, I don't have a 3G iPad, and I want to be able to display, use AirPlay to display to my iPad. I don't think that's possible because you need an Apple TV or at, at Airport Express. I think that's the case. I don't think that, and that, that's another example of something you probably could do if you jailbroke, but I don't know of a way to do it without. I even looked through some j forums about this topic just to see if there was like a, a weird way yeah. to put it together. Nobody had anything that made any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Because obviously Apple doesn't want this or else you'd never get a 3G iPad. Yep. Never mind. Yeah. So can't so, do it. Sorry, not at this happen. point, it's not going to happen. Sorry, can't and do it. Maybe, mm -hmm. ma <laughs> maybe yep, someday it. in the future, but no, it's. There it, is an it, app, it according to Colin, to... Uh, who's sitting right over here. Hi, Colin. Hi, Colin. Uh, that uh, called AirView that makes your app uh, iPad an AirPlay client. So that means that you could AirPlay to your. See, that's what you want. But now, I think is that that's a, is that a jailbreak only? only? Yeah, it's an answer. All right, here, here we go. We got it. Okay. Colin's got it. All right. Waiting for an AirPlay collect connection. So, whoa. whoa. You didn't, you didn't want that, did you? Good grief. 
Well, look at that first gen iPad. It's so it's thick. It's so thick. It doesn't. It's so quaint. So what's going on here? We're it's just waiting for it. For me to airplay to it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Are we on this? What network are you on? Production? I Probably. think. All right, well, let's see. So if I uh, pick uh, a video but, from... But but we're on a Wi-Fi network. That's yeah, different yeah. than... Well, if we're on the same network... Well, if you're nerdy enough, you could create a ad hoc... Uh, a little hotspot. Yeah. We could yeah. do that. But generally, you want to be on the same uh, the same network. Um, I only have audio, unfortunately. So, uh, But let's try it with audio. So um, I'm playing something from Bass Nectar. You like Bass Nectar, I like Bass Nectar. Yeah. I'm into dubstep I know you're a dubstep, uh, a big dubstep fan. Yeah. Where's In fact, my, Darren uh, Kitchen told me about Bass Nectar. Where's my... Uh, there we go. Uh, no. But we're not on the same network. So in theory, because this is waiting for an AirPlay connection, we could play to it from an iPhone. That's good. That's called AirView. All right. I still feel there like I go. like that high paddle sticker. That's kind of fun. <laughs> Good stuff, Colin. I still feel like this particular question was about data connection. So it's... You think that that's not what they, they, what they wanted to do? Well, I just... I, it, it seems like this is really good for uh, two iPads or an iPhone and an iPad on the same Wi-Fi connection. Right. But I'd like to see it work on 3G well. Oh, he was trying to... He, he's got an iPhone that's got tethering. data. Kind of. Yes. Exactly. Or to be able to, see, yes. Well, it's okay. not just tethering, but let's just use just my sure iPhone. But I want the iPad. Uh, well, see, Airplay, real estate. Airplay requires you to be on the same network. He could create an ad hoc network, as uh, as Colin said. Yeah. Yeah. But so. You know, I will vary. take this on to, for next week. Will you? Sure. Okay. I'm going to have to remind you because you won't actually You're going to have to give it. me your iPhone, too. <laughs> I don't want it. Well, yeah, you don't have an iPhone. I don't have an iPhone. This is going to be a fun project. <laughs> we got, Maybe I'll get an iPhone. Like Leo said earlier in the show, we got a plethora of duh tips this week. There's you a duh tip. Just bust out with the duh tips every once in a while. Another duh tip. What and is a duh tip? A duh tip is a tip for the iPad, which some of you would say... Duh. Uh, everybody knows how to do that. Duh. But a small portion of people might go, oh my gosh, I had no idea you could do this. And therefore, it is worth mentioning. Right. First uh, tip is from, well, it's from Anonymous, but it's a good one. Hey, y'all, I have a dad tip for you. When I first started using Instagram and Twitter and I would scroll down through the feeds and want to get back up to the top, there was no return to the top button. And I found that by touching the time, and the bar at the very top, it would return you back to the very beginning on anything, whether in an app or in a browser or whatever. It's a real quick, get me back to the top of the page button. True words of Nervous Book. It's, it's the only way to use an iPad. So if I'm how in do you my do Twitter that? I don't even know this. I'm, oh, not, I'm, a, dar, I'm a dar. No, you're not, you, you know how to use this. It's just that she explained it and you're so used to... Okay. Doing so, it. Just doing it. Let's say I'm scrolled all the way down yeah, my Twitter Now stream. how do I get oh, back so up to the top? And now I want to go back. To, uh, uh, eh. You don't actually have to do any of that. You just touch, like she said, the time of day. In whoop, most apps that works. And you're all the way back. Yeah, I yeah, like that. That's actually part of Apple's guidelines. They're supposed to do that. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a, for many people, a very obvious way to navigate around. And once you start using it, you wonder why you ever scrolled again. And yet, I don't think it's something that you would guess. So I, think, you? I think people, if they haven't been taught that that works, just try it. touch the time by accident and See go, ah, I went all the way to the top. Oh my gosh, I've unlocked some Easter egg <laughs> on the iPad. By the way, I just want to take this opportunity to mention that something very similar is, is something that I was doing for a long time yeah. where I'm like You're in scrolling, page seven scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. and I wanted to go back to page one. You I've scrolled all the way to the no, end of my iPad. you didn't push the home button. You would scroll back? I would scroll back <laughs> and nobody, nobody told me just until finally button, somebody, I think, saw me scrolling and was like, poor you Sarah, doing? you just pressed the home button. <laughs> it takes you all the way back. So you go, you go, you at least go to the beginning. So you can't right. say like, quick to page three, at least not yet, but that will help you if you... What, what it helps me with a lot is when I'm looking for an app and I'm like, I just don't know where it is. I'm just going to go search. Start over. And that's what I do. That's yep. a nice little shortcut. So you shortcut. see what she did? She pressed the home button and then swiped to yeah, the right. To get to the because once you're page. home, that's right. your quick search. So right. it really works out well. And I felt like a really big duh person that's for not too. knowing that. Uh, well, we thank you, Anonymous. Thank you, Anonymous. And Next time, let us know what Nebraska your name is. Nebraska Brian yes. has a tip for us. He does. Hey, this is Brian from Nebraska. A quick little dad tip. 
uh, if you're occasionally having an app that uh, is confused or locked up or something, sometimes you can just double click that home button and delete it from your multitasking bar down below. It must do something to clear the memory of wherever it was confused at because many times you can just then reopen the app and you're good to go. Sure. So instead of deleting the app completely and re-downloading all the data or whatever it is, sometimes you can just pop it off of the uh, multitasking bar down below. It's a force quit. Okay. It's a force quit. Yep. Uh, I, 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 hope, <laughs> I hope most of you uh, know about how you can kill an app that's acting strange or has become unresponsive. If you don't, let's say I've got a bunch of stuff running. Let's say Twitter is just giving me a lot of grief. Uh. So what I do is I, you know, because it's open in the background, right, or I was just there, you go ahead and open it in your dock. You hold uh, almost as if you were going to move it around, bec but because it's in your dock, you get these little these little minus signals, which of course mean that you can shut it up. Now, what I did is I didn't just remove Twitter, um, the app, from my iPad. I just killed it running in the background. So at this point, I can go ahead and go back to my home screen. It's in my favorites folder. Launch it again. And more time, uh, almost every time I've ever done this, it, and it doesn't happen that often. I, I don't have, or I, I at least don't use apps that often that are giving me problems, but it does happen. Every so, every so often it does happen. And almost always, this is the only fix you really need. You don't need to delete an app and reinstall it. I mean, that's, I have done that in extreme cases that, a yeah. couple of times, yep. but almost always, this is all, this is as far as you need to go. Um, to to get that app working again because I mean these are little programs they do sometimes get confused and just kind of stop working or they work they get muddly so thank you Nebraska Brian it's a very good tip and yeah you shouldn't have to be deleting apps and reinstalling them in le in, in the most extreme cases but not as often if if, you know, if you're doing that once a week try this instead yes indeed and finally we got an email from John in. <sighs> The New Jersey people are going to know how to say this. Piscataway. Piscataway. I know how to say that. Really? Oh, Have yeah. you been there? Yeah, I'm in the Pis Piscataway. Is it on the ocean or oh. near <laughs> Pennsylvania? Or uh, that's Punxsutawney you're thinking of. I, I don't. Piscataway. I, no, I'm, just, I'm just thinking of New Jersey on a map. Some of it's on the ocean. So yes. Piscataway, it's a great name. Yes. Reminds me of Pisco Sour. I wonder if they drink a lot of those there. <laughs> oh, I loved Pisco Sours. Me too. Those are from Argentina and Chile and, and Peru. Peru. I think they're actually Peruvian. Is it a Peruvian drink? I think it is. But you, you can get them all over. You can get them. Uh, they're, they're very hip in San Francisco right now. Really? Is that the drink in San Francisco? Well, it's one of them. I'll be it's, darned. you know, raw egg. It's, you know, it's, oh, is there raw egg in there? You're taking a little... Oh, there's ooh, alcohol in you it. You never know. Anyway, John is a teacher, and he said... He's a seventh grade math teacher, in fact. And he said he loves apps that, um, this is in response to our accessibility apps yes. episode last week. And he said, you know, education apps um, often are for elementary school aged people. You know, it's almost as if you think, oh, k children. But obviously people of all ages are in school for a right. variety of reasons. And he said that he found an app that he really, this. really likes. This it's called neat. Algebra Touch. So I went ahead and downloaded it. This is great. And, you know, I was quite the algebra whiz back in the day. Were you? I was. You loved to integrate uh, equations and things like I that? I loved yeah. algebra. You were brilliant well, at that. Well, you know, and geometry and trig and stuff. I it loved was it, just, too. Yeah, it was just a lot of fun. Yeah. And it's amazing what I've forgotten because <laughs> I downloaded Algebra Touch and I started to fool around the stuff. And well, it, was it like, doesn't, let's oh, be honest, right. come up a Basic lot in equation. conversation. No. no. Or in practice. Right. I mean, are you doing a lot of, <laughs> a lot of X equals? No. Not a lot. No. But, and I'm in the basic equations area of, of, elder, uh, of Algebra Touch right now. Four here's here's what's three, great about this, is two. I think that m a lot of students, it's not that they don't get math. It's that an equation, you look at it and it just, you need to see it a different way. It's almost like kids who aren't good readers, they need to be taught in a different way than most kids learn to read. And it's not because they don't have the skills, they just need to learn differently. So this is can great. Can you actually drag the number, the factors around and stuff, or no? Uh, oh, you can. Yeah. So, so I can drag the three. What it does is it gives you different visuals. So it's like three acts, I don't know. Remember, it's three times right. X, and X has not been assigned a value yet type right. of a thing. So, yeah, and you, you can move things around, You can. Actually. Oh, yeah. super cool. Super that cool. That really teaches you what's going on. And that's you, fantastic. It, totally. And it's, and it's it, again, I'm looking at something that's sort of 
simple, but it, this is a really cool app. And if you oh, get I wish stuck, I had this for Henry during Algebra 2. This would have been right. great. Right. It'll give you, so it, it'll, if you are like, I'm you stuck, please show right. me. And this is. Well, you pretty much screwed up that equation. <laughs> well. Now you, move the four over. You screwed it up. <laughs> I did. You yeah. screwed it up. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you uh, add four and two and simplify there? Anyway. <laughs> Right. So it, it, as you go on and on, 2 plus X 4 is 6. Three. Yay. X equals 3. And then how do I do this? There you go. Nice job. Then simplify that. Well, I'm not simplifying it, am <laughs> yeah, I? Yeah, now you have to take, take the 2 out. There you go. No. Uh, no. -uh. But 2 I want times 3. You want to go back to 2 times 3. Uh, I do. Cancel the 2. Yep. T click the 6. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now. I don't oh, know. oh. There you go. See? That's See great. how happy I just got? That is with really, a really great. simple algebra problem. No, but you know what? That's a hard thing to teach kids. Uh, but that, dragging it around like that, I think, would be a good way to learn that. Well, especially, you know, the pencil and the. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I remember. I, I had to teach Henry all that, that yeah, last year. And, and then, this would have made it much easier. I wish I'd had this. Much easier. It's great. So there's an explanation area of, of algebra touch. And then again, there's, there's practice areas, which I was in. If you need to save sessions, um, you can do that. I actually saved a, a, just a sort of silly session. You can actually create equations. That's so this great. would be great, you know, a teacher or a parent who is like, all right, I'm going to put this on the paper and I need you to solve it. And it also just gives, yeah, I mean, besides the fact that you don't have to waste a bunch of paper and do a lot of erasing, which of course math people know. I mean, you just can't do this stuff with a pen unless you're like a total genius. Now, you know who does use this? I was saying it doesn't come up a lot, but if you're a programmer, you use that all the time, especially if you're doing graphics. That's mm. the kind of thing graphics programmers use all the time. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, just to add uh, to that, uh, the Wolfram Alpha people make a series of applications uh, for students, and they have a Wolfram Alpha Algebra course assistant. I have it up right here that does... This is not, I have to say, not as slick, but it has the same idea of, of uh, uh, doing all this stuff. It has, it's a fancy calculator, but also can teach you um, by steps using Wolfram Alpha uh, how to solve equations, formulas, and so forth. So, and they have this in a number of different areas. So there are many tools. And I think this is, a, this is where the iPad really is shining mm -hmm. for teaching. There's really some stuff you can do. Uh, that you can really learn. And we were talking about graphing calculators, very useful uh, for stuff like that as well. I think uh, it's also, as, a, as somebody who might be struggling to get some mathematical concepts down, there is something about, oh, I've wasted all this paper, I've, I've done it so many times, I'm just, I'm spent, I give up. Right. And this kind of, it's like you can get a clean slate just by, you know, just a little touch of a button. And I think it helps people go, okay, okay, let's start over. It's almost like a game. Yeah. A little bit more yeah. of that game element going on. Algebra Touch, just want to mention, two ninety nine, so right. three bucks. And it goes from I love that. pretty simple algebra to, I love that. to getting into more... More, what a neat uh, idea. Yeah, more, more integrated. So that uh, was John uh, from Piscataway, Piscataway, New Jersey's suggestion. Piscataway. Thank you, John. It's always great to get a suggestion from a teacher who says, this is an app that I love and I use it regularly. Okay, we got one more voicemail from Steve who needs a little convincing on something. Take it away, Steve. Hey, Leo and Sarah. This is Steve um, listening from New Hampshire. And I was just, you know, watching your latest uh, show on August 11th, and you were talking about the Facebook Messenger app. And I understand how important that could be for, um, possibly for the iPad, because there's no, um, there's no Facebook, you know, Facebook, you know, uh, app for the iPad um, yet, at least. Um, but in terms of like the iPhone, I'm not sure. Do you have a an example or a use? why I would choose that over the, the normal Facebook app and using the messenger uh, built right into that. Um, love the show. Back to there. Bye. So the reason... No, the reason. <laughs> well, okay. Here's the reason. <coughs> oh, fudge. Good fudge, huh? It's, it's, it's almost like this is like a math equation. Like, try to talk while, while eating, eating fudge, fudge mm. and get it right. Mm -hmm. the, the deal with... Facebook is, yes, there is chat integration into even something like Friendly, which is the number one Facebook alternative which app. Which showed last week. There yeah. is chat integrated into that, but the whole idea behind Facebook Messenger 
is that you don't need to use the whole Facebook experience. It's uh, basically replacing text messaging. That's exactly what it is. Or the BlackBerry Messenger, which is yeah. what its real com competitor is. Hopefully so you're using it. Awful so here. you are actually no, using all, it. This is all pretty G-rated. Some of my messages are kind of weird with my friends. But, yeah, so I have, I, I'm going to Vegas this weekend with a group. We've got a nice, like, Fun. little Facebook group of stuff we're going to do. MG and I talk on Facebook uh, Messenger all the time. It totally replaced Beluga for us. Really? Yeah, Tom yeah. sent me a link uh, bills, actually bills, during bills. last week's show. Yeah, great <laughs> recording of Bill's Bills. Jonathan bills, Colton bills. has a yeah, yeah he has a yeah, different that, version we were of it. About that Destiny's By the way, that song was in my head for uh, a yeah, solid four it's days. Air, it's an earworm. Yeah, yeah, it is. But the idea is that if I'm going to be messaging back and forth between either a group of people and sharing uh, text and pictures, or just one person back and forth. I don't need to be in Facebook at all. Right. This is a Facebook product. It's a light weight. Yeah, and yeah. Facebook realizes that people want to chat back and forth, and they don't need to have all of their other options as well. They don't need to see a news feed. I just want to tell Leo something, and I don't want to use my text plan. So that's, that's why Facebook Messenger exists outside of Facebook itself, even though you can chat within Facebook. Just, you just have two options. I prefer this to chatting within Facebook, personally. Which is funny, because that's an iPhone app, that's, isn't it? Or yes. Is, yeah, that's not even an iPad Yeah, this is app. just blown up. Yeah. Yeah. Do you use it on your iPhone? Totally. That's where you use it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, use it, I use it both on places both. because I don't have an SMS capability right. on my iPad. Ah, that's a good point. So it's like, I don't, don't even SMS me because right. my phone might not be in like front that. of me. Yeah. I, you know, I, 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 want, I want them to all speak the same language, darn it. Dang nation. A uh, reminder, you can always email us. You can send us uh, videos. You can send us voicemails. We love hearing from you. Thank you so much fudge. to everybody. We love getting fudge. fudge from people who come us visit us in our studio. Yep. Anything you want to send us. <laughs> it's the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All so right. Yes. Get your app cap on. All right. I, I always forget. If somebody would get... Liz, you brought me an app cap? It's always fun. You never know what Liz is going to bring me for a hat. So I'll wear that in a moment. But you know, first. I always start every day on a diet. And then I come to work, and then I eat fudge. Yeah, me too. I, I have good intentions until I get here. I want to talk a little bit about Netflix.com. My friends, you all know about Netflix. We are big fans here at the uh, Twit Brick House of Netflix. We all have it. We all use it. We all love it. In fact, I've often wondered, why do I even do ads for Netflix? Everybody loves Netflix. Well, maybe you don't have it yet. Maybe you've not seen it on the iPad. I have to say, this is a really great uh, solution for the iPad. Um, a nice iPad interface. Uh, you can go by genre. You can go uh, search, of course. What? Uh, let's see. Somebody was telling me about a, a movie called Catfish. Let me just see if this is on instant. This is what's oh, great. Oh, it's that. Else. It's that face other Facebook movie. Yeah. But it's the documentary it's rather a than quote the Aaron documentary. Sorkin. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, nope. They don't have it on streaming, but I can probably get the DVD of it. These are suggestions. But here's the beauty of this. Winter's you, Bone is so good. I watched that again the other oh, night. Oh, you like that? Oh, man. It was I good. I hate that movie. Why? It's creepy. Well, but it's... Let's watch it again. <laughs> what do you say? What? <laughs> Nothing. You weren't supposed to see me yet, Chad. Nothing. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. So, um, look, I'm watching this movie. Winter's Bone. It's not really running that fast, is it? That was a fast movie. It's over now. Okay. Well, you're at the end or something. Something weird happened there. Let's start that over again. Um, this is the beauty of it. When you have an iPad, you now have a mobile entertainment device that you can watch movies on. You can watch TV shows. Mad Men's on there. Hey, I can see myself. Glee's on there. It is really fantastic. And at seven ninety nine a month, there is no better choice for uh, your entertainment dollar. I'm just a big fan. Now, if you have it uh, already, you know about it. I don't have to tell you anything about it. If you don't have it, will you do me a favor? Tell a friend. Get it. And if you do have it, tell a friend, your neighbor, your grandma. Let her know that Netflix exists and you can try it for free for 30 days. Netflix.com slash twit. I, Winner's Bone, I just creeped me out. Well, it is a creepy movie. It's just interesting that... The acting is good. People are very good. Yeah. They're just mean. But they don't Everyone's like them. Everyone's mean. I don't like them. And they're all related. They're, I don't like them. They don't like each other and, you know, they're, like they're all sort of cousins or whatever. I think anyway, you're wearing my hat. It, that might... <laughs> That might be the case. No, your hat is really cute. It's you know where I got this. It's right on the tippy top. In Petersburg, did, Russia. Did you wash it too hot after you bought it? <laughs> no, it it, uh, it never fit. Then Russians have small heads. All uh, right, thank Many you, Liz. Don't know Liz this. gave me an adorable hat, which I love. Although it's an interesting choice for summer. You know where I got that? 
were. Streets of New York. Yeah, in the winter, yeah, I in bet. In the winter, it was yeah. really cold. Yeah, it, and it yeah. makes your head really warm. It's warm, isn't it? Yes. Plus, you get little bear ears, which that, is cute. Yeah. You very, and you very, can very cute. do this. So, let's do a wrap cap. We wear these silly hats uh, to honor an application each week, an application we think is very important, and you, I think, have a beaut. I do. Now, I have to give credit to Apple's very own App Store because this was the iPad app of the week. Now, normally, we wouldn't do this, but this is so good. It's that, so good. Yeah, and it's from Nick Software, which we love. Exactly. It's called Snapseed, and I actually overlooked it originally because Snapseed does not sound like a photography app to it me. It does not. I'm not really sure what it means, yes. but I'm sure that they've they've got their reasons. But I love photography apps, and I try them all because one of the most fun things I have on the iPad, even though the iPad itself doesn't take the best pictures in the world, you import some photos, and then I can play around all day making them, you know, HDR or whatever. So Nick, NIK makes the best Photoshop plugins out there. They're really fantastic, and they've taken a lot of that power, and they've put it in this inexpensive app on the, uh, on it's, the iPad. It's beautiful. It can even... Um, if you if you can get them into your iPad, it can even handle raw images and be able to wow. add effects to them and spit them back out still as raw. Oh, so that's now, see, I'm tempted. I'm thinking I could get the images. I could just import them to my iPad, and then as I'm on the train or on the plane, I can work on these. Exactly. In a very nice. And there's something about touch that really is yeah. nice for this. Yeah. Just think of it. It's almost like a wor photographer's work table. Yeah. This is a picture I took uh, on Instagram. You can tell because it's kind of a crappy thing. This that's is a these great are my picture. mom's two new kittens. That's a great picture. Aren't they adorable? Love it. Well, the the quality of it isn't great, but uh, the, you know this is a picture I took, and there's an Instagram filter on it because you can see that there's a little, there's, there's a little uh, yeah, you can see where it's, going on. yeah, it's 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 a little bit cuter than it was just straight out of the iPad. But at this point, um, I've already cropped it, but I've got black and white vintage film options, drama, or you know something like center focus. So. What's neat about this is you can see that it's already, it's done that cool thing where, you know, it's the tilt shift thing that all the ki cool kids are doing these days. Like if I want Bessie to be oh, the focal point of the picture nice job on that and have too. Zephyr just kind of yeah. fade away, that's what she would want. Um, or, the, or the opposite and, and choose how much is going to be blurred. And by the way, what uh, Snapseed does that, it took me a little while to get this, but once I did, it became very intuitive is in a variety of the filters that you can choose from, you've got like center size and filter strength. So let's say I say, I love the way this looks, but it's just a little too strong. I want there to be much more mm -hmm. of a, mm -hmm. a, a blur that I isn't so dramatic. Then I use back and forth on the picture itself. And as you can see, the percentage is changing without actually using a slider. And down oh, on the bottom, it, like it lets that. me know what I'm doing. Um, I also have different styles. so. I can go into like fog mode or have like a light shadowy type thing, make it a lot darker and ominous type thing. Um, what the compare button is great because I can be like, wait, how did it start? It started like this. Do I like this? Nice. Mm, what am I, you know, d is there something in the middle that I would prefer to have? I can undo a change. Um, I can apply the changes or I could just go back and start where I started from the beginning. You obviously have frames. Um, frames, I'm, I'm not so big on frames, but there are a lot of frames for people who like that kind of thing. Um, and then again, you've got they're your neat choices. Frames, though. They're not like just, you know, plain old frames. No, they're cool. It, yeah. it's, for, it's, for, it's a certain style. You right. can choose your frame width and your offset. This is actually what I like the most about this app is once you start playing around with your different with your different styles the best part is let's click and see what my choices are like i've got center size texture strength saturation brightness and then once i'm in brightness then i can play with my brightness once i'm in texture strength i can play with that that didn't change so much uh, you know in this particular picture but the center size definitely does ooh that already looks way cooler it's yeah, got this yeah. whole different feel i'd look at black and white you know they have some really great black and white converters in here too yeah they do nick is famous for their um their silver uh, effects black and white converter just gorgeous there's also one more thing and this is this i don't know of any other ipad app that does this at least not as cool this is selective adjust so let's say you have a picture. Um, this is kind of a weird example, but we'll do our best here. I'm going to go ahead and add this area of Zephyr the Cat's face to selectively adjust. Um, and I'm going to go with brightness. Now, I'm going to go ahead and increase the brightness just on his face. Um, mm, 
you know, I think it's because it's black. It doesn't really look any different. <laughs> That's sort of a dumb yeah, idea. It's bright black. You see what I mean? It's yeah, it's like, black I'm, cha saw, I'm changing yeah. black. Oh, how, how would I explain this well? This is actually a really cool feature, so I don't want to make it seem like it's not cool. So here's what's going on is like, oh my God, you're making the cat red. This is actually just telling you. That's the region. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's giving you the region, and it helps to try not to bleed beyond that region because it's trying to be smart. Like, let's say right. you wanted to lighten up somebody's face in a picture, right. but you wanted nothing else to get, like, too light. And right. it, iPhoto, really iPhoto has issues with this. It's like, it'll brighten up everything, right. but the selective area sometimes is really this important. This is very, very uh, sophisticated. And of course, you'd expect that from Nick Software. They really know what they're doing. Totally. I'll show yeah. you, actually, one. There's one um, other picture that this worked out really well in. So this is a picture of MG and I on a, on a vacation. And I used to look to <laughs> adjust. What a vacation. I know. Well, uh, this is... Yeah. Our natural habitat, pretty yeah. much. But this particular picture, I it's thought was cute. It's called play. <laughs> right. I thought it was cute because it's like, oh, look That's at us. Adorable. Such nerds. And that was a yeah. self-portrait, by the way. So, I mean, we really are yes, even nerdier. Yes. But our, our iPads were kind of in the shadow. So I used Selective Adjust ah. to just brighten up the iPads themselves rather than the entire, see? So I'm like, wow. yeah. So now you get, that's a better example of how you can use something like that. Anyway, this is Snapseed. It's $4.99. I just bought so it. So make sure that you're a pho See, all right. I just bought it. Yeah. I'm so I'm just it's, loving it. Again, it's, it does a lot of the same stuff you might already be used to apps doing, but it does it in a different way, and it has a couple features that I haven't seen from anybody else yet. So $4.99, Snapseed. Get it if it uh, looks good to you. Looks yep. good to me. Uh, you look good to me in that. Well, you look good to me in your hat that's very snug. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to show you a game that I consider really fun. Okay. Actually, Paul Therat suggested this earlier on Windows Weekly, and I played it, and I said, wow, i got to make this my pick, and I threw out my pick. I'll save it for next week. i got a good kicking, cooking pick cooking pick for you. Ooh, but this cooking. Is, yeah. Well, you want me to do that instead? No. Uh, this is called... Defender of the Crown. Now, Paul is an Amiga head. Okay. 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 So, Paul likes Amiga games and always has. This is um, a port of an Amiga game that he says is exactly like it was on the Amiga. And so, if you like classic Amiga gaming and that 8-bit look... Well, you know, 8-bit is very hot right now. It's very hot. And I tell you what... Oh, my gosh. Yeah, some of you will go nostalgia crazy on this thing. It is a lot of fun. It's two ninety nine, which is, I think, a very good price uh, for a game of this caliber. There's a, as, as you see, copyright 1986. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is, uh, it's, it's, it's the nostalgia shop. Yeah, but you know what? It's shop. actually, the gameplay on this is pretty good. And this is something that Paul said, and I agree with him. So, shall I be Steve Wozniak? Shall I be, who is that? Oh, just choose Steve Jeffrey Bushimi? Longsword. Jeffrey Longsword? Yeah, why not? Why not? Isn't that why who you'd like to be? He's good at sword play. Uh -huh. So that's important because um, there are different things you can do in here. There's jousting. It's a little, it's a little slow. Well, it's I, think to it's, give you I think it's, it's such a good emulator it's that it acts to like it experience. used to. Okay, okay, okay. Uh -huh. The Normans yeah. are assembling I'm armies. To get in the got game. it, got yeah, it. Yeah, there's backstory. Okay. So there's Wilfred of Ivanhoe. He's good leadership, good jousting, average at sword play. These are the various people where they live. All of your games look exactly alike, even Amiga games, Leo. I know. You've I have a definitely certain, got a clear a style. style that I like. No, no, no. But no, there's much more going on in this game. Oh, I bet. So there's a little bit of a risk element. You ever play Risk? Yeah. This is Risk. But you also have some other stuff. So you can actually hold a tournament. Come on, come on, come on. I think you have to do them in order. Maybe I have to. Yeah. Because uh, it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Maybe I'm. Maybe Gee, what a great iPad app. Come on! Non-responsive. Non just like being like on an Amiga. The Amiga. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have a nice help menu for when you get The tournament's stuck. fun. I want to get into the tournament. Gosh darn it. What hold, am I doing wrong? Hold tournament. So, I don't know. Um, click on a state. Maybe, it, maybe it's just not. A region, rather. <laughs> It's nothing's doing anything. I take it back. Oh, you know, wait a minute. Yes, restart. Thank you. Oh, wow. Well, that, that was a great app. That's two not a button. That's your orders. for a lot of fun. <laughs> it plays just like it used to. <laughs> 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 no, no. I'm just doing it wrong. It's actually, it's fun. I was playing it. Uh, I just, you have to kind of insert disc two, and that was the problem. I only have one of the discs. 
<laughs> We're not going through this again. Defender of the Crown, everybody. Okay, anyway. <laughs> no, I get it. I it's get as good an app as my app cap. Any anybody I stand who, behind that. who is a fan of the game will get a kick out you of it. You will know, and it's a very faithful rendering of this game. This is nice. This is hybrid for iPhone phone as well as iPad. Cool. So you can play it. And the graphics are a little more compelling on the iPhone because um, it's the same, but it's smaller. Yeah. yeah. But it seems like it would be the sort of thing that you'd want to play on the iPad. It's really true to the uh, the original uh, game. And that's this is the sort of thing where you go, hey, buddy, get a little of this. Look See, what they I'm couldn't playing. get any farther Defender than that of the either. Crown. They got stuck there, too. <laughs> they they, they want to hold a tournament. There's three screens. How do you hold a tournament? No, it, it got great ratings, and, and I think I'm just, I was pushing the wrong button there. But you can have jousting and all sorts of stuff. See? Same game. Good stuff. Three Defender screens. of the Crown. <laughs> Amiga fans, cry no more. Wipe away those tears. You've got games. All right, Leo. We've come to the end of our show, and my head is on fire. I need to, like, put my head in the freezer before it TNT starts. That is a warm hat. <laughs> Do I look as warm, warm as I feel? Yeah. No, you're not glowing. You're not glowing. Not at all. You I'm will just, soon. Uh, I'm, really, I'm going to slow down at the end of the show so we can really see how hot Sarah's head can get. Great. Super excited. Well, Glad thanks you were every, here. Thanks, everybody, for uh, joining us on episode 59. This is our last episode. In the 50s. In the 50s. And then we go into <laughs> the 60s. That's momentous. Isn't that great? <laughs> That's a big, big Wow. Big Big deal there. Was, this is a pivotal moment, everybody. Yes, it is. A transition that will never be forgotten. Next week, we are going to talk about watching videos in the iPad. And it's not even just apps. Well, it's and I will all have the that, best sources. I will have that thing work in the view, the view share. Oh, you will? It's going to help me get cool. that AirPlay working Air with the phone. AirView. Yes. Yeah. Very good. So that'll be that'll be part of our roundup because um, we've been getting a lot of good suggestions and been seeing stuff around because everybody's... Kind of starting to go HTML5, and so you have a lot more options there, and people are cutting the cord, and they want different options besides cable that then they can stream to their big screen TV. So that's going to be our theme next week. If you have anything that we cannot leave out, please send them to us a variety of ways. What's iPad our, today at twit.tv. That's what I was asking. What's the email? iPad today. Okay, good. That's right. And of course, you can always go and watch all of our show archives at twit.tv slash IPT. That's where, that's where, that's our home base of the show. Watch all 59 episodes. Don't miss one. Don't You'll miss regret an episode. It. You'll regret it. All right, everybody. See you next week. I'm going to go hold a tournament. Today. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh. Tip of the hat. Tip of the iceberg. Tip of the iceberg. Tip of the... So I'm back here. Oh, it's a pointer. There we oh go. Oh, my gosh. That is awful. There we go. That is awful. Thank you. How come I couldn't figure that out? Because you don't have a mouse on an iPad! All right, there we go. Wilfred of Ivanhoe hosts a day of jousting in the lists at Ashby de la 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 La.